Did the Colombian military really kill Pablo Escobar? Did he commit And why did he call his son knowing fully well the phones were tapped? To find the answers to these questions, I've gathered enough intel about his death and what exactly happened in those final moments for Don Pablo. So just forget everything you think you know about how he died as I paint a clearer and better picture of every single detail leading up to the moment Pablo Escobar was confirmed dead. At around 3 p.m. on December 2, 1993, a message was delivered through a handheld transceiver to the Colombian military. The message was, Viva Colombia, matamo de Pablo Escobar. This roughly translates to long live Colombia, we've killed Pablo Escobar. That was the moment the greatest drug lord to ever walk the earth was confirmed dead by a group of Colombian soldiers on a rooftop. However, just 24 hours before, Pablo Escobar was celebrating his 44th birthday. But unlike other birthdays, Pablo was now a mirrored version of himself. Pablo, who was very particular about looking decent with his clean mustache look, now had a scruffy beard and a bloated stomach. And for the first time in 16 years, he wasn't celebrating his birthday with his family. And for the first time since he was born, he wasn't celebrating with a party. All he had this time around was a small cake, a bottle of wine, his trusted bodyguard El Limon, and his beloved Aunt Luis Mia. Pablo was hiding at his aunt's place located in the Los Olivos district, Medellin, Colombia. He had been on the run for over 16 months after screwing his luckiest chance of ever being a free man, and that chance was his confinement to La Catedral. So, how did he mess things up? Well, after ordering the killing of over 100 politicians and judges in Colombia, the United States, the Colombian military, a special group of special forces specifically trained in the U.S. to capture Escobar called the Search Block and Los Pepes, some extra-legal muscle who didn't mind crossing the lines of legality and morality that Pablo so blithely ignored, were all in search of Pablo Escobar. But this search for Escobar didn't just start 24 hours before his death. It started right after he broke his agreement with the Colombian government back in June 1991. At the height of Escobar's power, he had a controversial agreement with the Colombian government to prohibit the extradition of Colombian citizens to the United States and also halt the operations of his drug empire while he confined himself in his own private prison known as La Catedra. Now, to be honest, La Catedral was more like a five-star luxurious hotel than it was a prison. We had sexy women walking in and out of the building more than designated Colombian police officers. It was a perfect deal for Pablo. He had all the needed amenities any normal man could have. He was heavily protected by his men. His family could easily visit, and he still had control of his billion-dollar cocaine empire in this luxury prison. However, Pablo threw away his privilege after he killed two of his men, whom he suspected stole money from his stash inside La Catedra. After the designated prison guards reported the case to the Colombian government, the government immediately took drastic action to extradite Pablo Escobar to the U.S. As always, Pablo was one step ahead. Immediately, a convoy of military vehicles arrived at La Catedra to take Pablo into custody. He was already gone. So as I was saying at the beginning, Pablo Escobar went to hide at his aunt's place, but his family was still open to danger. Pablo knew the Los Pepes group wouldn't mind taking a hit at his family in a bid to smoke him out, and the Colombian government wasn't willing to take responsibility for him. So in a moment of desperation, Pablo found a way to send his family to Germany to seek asylum. But the German government wanted nothing to do with the Escobar family. They sent them back to Colombia. Pablo was furious. He knew his family coming back to Colombia was like entering the belly of the beast. And there was only one way things could end, and that was with their death. Pablo's assumptions weren't far from reality, as the Colombian government decided to use his family as bait to bring him out of hiding. They held Pablo's family in a hotel planted with microphones and tapped phones, just in case Pablo tried contacting them through any means. But on the other side, Pablo decided to wage war with the search block and Los Pepes. However, Pablo's men were outnumbered two to one, leading to the downfall of his drug empire. They killed over 300 of Pablo's men in the 16-month window he was hiding and destroyed many of his properties, including two houses that belonged to his mother, Emil de Gravia. It was time for the final showdown. Just 55 minutes before Pablo's death, he had a well-cooked meal of spaghetti made by his aunt. 
and after having that final meal, Pablo decided to place a call to his son, Juan Pablo. Pablo told El Limon to dial the hotel where his family was staying and tell the phone operator that it was a journalist. Immediately, the phone was transferred and they heard Pablo Escobar's voice. His son immediately ended the call. But since all the phones in the hotel were tapped, the head of the search block, Colonel Hugo Martinez, instructed his team to triangulate the exact location the call came from. That call, however, was too short for them to get any headway. Pablo tried reaching his son seven more times, but Juan Pablo kept declining the call. After much persistence, Juan Pablo finally answered. But this is where things get interesting. The phone call was very weird, because Pablo wasn't asking any important questions. According to Juan himself, Pablo was asking for the answers to fun quiz questions in a popular Colombian magazine. And as much as Juan tried getting his father off the phone, reminding him that phones were tapped, Pablo kept talking. That phone call allowed the search block to get an exact map of where Pablo could be, but they still weren't sure of the exact building he was in. Now in a sharp turn of events, Colonel Hugo Martinez's son spotted Pablo through a window, and at exactly 2.57 p.m., a convoy of 300 armed men surrounded the building. They broke into the house while Pablo was still on the phone. At 3 p.m. sharp, El Limon spotted the officers coming up the stairs and immediately opened fire. It was at this moment that Pablo finally cut the call and grabbed his gun to shoot. Now, contrary to what you may know or might have seen somewhere else, El Limon actually left Pablo cowardly and tried to save himself, but immediately got out on the roof and his body was brutalized with more than 300 gunshots, sending him straight to the afterlife in less than a minute. On the other hand, there was Pablo still trying to wage war on the officers advancing towards him. He managed to escape through the window before getting caught with a bullet in the torso and his leg, making him fall to the ground and eventually end up dead. Now. Apart from the drama that ensued minutes before Pablo Escobar's death, there's still the question of what exactly happened seconds before he died. According to one official source, an unknown member of the search block followed Pablo through the window and put a bullet through his already injured body to seal the deal. Another more bizarre take on Pablo's death claims a certain man, Rodolfo Semilla Escobar, who claims to have been Pablo's brother and a member of Los Pepes, shot an M16 to kill Pablo as he ran across the rooftops. There are no official reports on who this man is and if he was indeed Pablo's brother, so the story smells a bit fabricated. However, the most logical and authentic story of Pablo's death came from his son, who now goes by the name Sebastian Morokin. Sebastian claims Pablo committed and what you'll hear next are his reasons why. He taught me because he told me not to fire in his mouth or any other part, just in the ear, right ear. And it was the same place where the uh, bullet appeared. I don't know about you, but is it possible that all the shots fired at Pablo, just one of those, conveniently found its way straight into his ear without the other bullets touching anywhere on his face? Now, I'm not a detective, so I can't say. But what I can say is that Pablo probably decided to end his life just so his family could be free. And that's the reason why he made the call to his son when he knew the phone was tapped. He knew they would find him. He wanted to be found. And he proved that the only man who could kill Pablo Escobar is Escobar himself. And if you don't believe me, then check out this video shown on the screen, where Pablo's son gives some more information about Pablo's traitors, even before the unsolved case of his mysterious death. Go ahead, click on it, because this story isn't over.